Good day, my name is Igor Jurasvec and I'm going to show you a quick uh, little demonstration of an expense claim application I built using forms. So let's go in and, uh, and have a look at that. So this is using a, a KG Designer. Um, inside here I've built a, a couple of pages, I've got a couple of smart objects uh, and some views. Um, I've got a smart object books for my travel expenses and the expense items and I've got a page that, uh, that uh, I've built where we can log a new expense and uh, go and approve that as well. So let's run through the demonstration and have a look at, at what this does. If I go to my uh, new expense claim page, let's go and open that up. And... So how this starts is um, this page opens up. What it does is the forms detects who I am uh, and it loads up my details. It also finds out who my manager is and loads up his details inside here as well as finding out who his manager is and then loads up uh, his manager. So effectively it's loaded up who approves my expense claims as well as who uh, would be a second level approver uh, based upon uh, if a certain threshold is reached. Okay, so on this form then uh, we have a view of the information. I can put in a claim title and a couple of details inside here and then I can go through and start to actually add expense claim items. What happens is uh, we load up a form where we can then start to add the different expense items. Before I go and complete one, I just want to show you a couple of details here. So I've got an area for category, and I have a list of items uh, that I can choose what category the expense is. You notice there's four at the moment. Uh, I've also got an area here where I can choose currency, and if I go down there, I've also got a couple of currencies. Now, what I've noticed is that I've, I've just had a trip down to the United States, and I'm actually missing US dollar inside here. So we need to make a change to the system so that it actually allows us to claim against US dollars. So instead of me going and hard coding all of those currencies and the details into this drop down this box, uh, what, I've, what we've rather done is have is got that as a configurable item inside of a list inside of SharePoint. So let's go and uh, and have a look at that. So with inside of SharePoint and under my human resources area, I've got a couple of lists. So the first one is a categories list where you saw the four categories, a and hotel, and uh, inside here we can then go and add an additional category. Inside of currency, I've also got the three uh, pounds, Japanese yen, and euros, and uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, we're missing US dollars. So essentially, what I'm going to come in here and just add USD and the currency inside here. And what you'll notice is I'm not adding any values to that, I'm just saying US dollar is a, is a code that we can, uh, a currency that we can uh, claim against. Um, but I'm not putting in the exchange rate because I don't have to maintain and manage that myself. That will be obviously quite difficult because of the way things are fluctuating at the moment. Uh, I have another area for parameters, and I've got one parameter in here called second approval limit, and I've got 300 uh, uh, pounds inside there. Effectively, if I claim more than that, I need to go to that second level. Let's go and run that. Go back into my expense claim. It'll find out who I am, load up my uh, my approvers, which is done there, and let's go and add some new items. So the first item, uh, let's go and add uh, some airfare. And, uh, into the airways. Uh, on the 23rd, that cost an amount. Eight hundred, and when I go to currency, if I go and choose a British pounds, it works out. Well, that's a one-to-one -one rating because I'm claiming in pounds, so that's fine. It's added that item into there for me. So I hit add, and what it's done now is it's added that as a new expense claim item and worked out my total for this claim so far is eight hundred pounds. Let's add a couple more. So I'm going to add a new item inside here as well. Now uh, while I was while I was over there, there was a hotel bill. Cloud. Um, that was paid for that on the day just before I got back, so it was on Sunday. And that was thousand dollars. Now, when I go to dollars, I choose USD. What you'll notice is it's brought through my currency for me. So that was that new item that we added, and it's brought through that currency rate. So now a lot of people ask me this question: Is that the currency rate as it is right now, or is it at that date and time? So if we go inside here, and if I change the date, so let's move that down to the 17th, what we'll see is the currency changes. So I'm trying to find a date where there was enough fluctuation 
But as I'm clicking on this, you can see the minor adjustments in the in the currency rate. Here we go. That's, that's quite a big difference over there. Um, that have taken place during that period of time. So from this form, it's actually going in. It's, it's calling uh, into a service that's finding what is the currency rate for that day um, and bringing that back in and using it inside of this calculation. Okay, so that, that's that's quite nice. I know when uh, we have, when, when I do expense claims, I always got to go and look at the rates and that is one of the reasons why I built this expense claim system that included these rates is that it takes me quite a lot of time, especially when I'm traveling around Europe and the world, I've got to go and you know look up all these different rates and, and try and get somewhat in the right uh, time span, especially when you know the markets are fluctuating quite a bit. And uh, essentially just doing that uh, takes me quite a bit of time. Right, so let's go and add that one inside here. So it's adding up my total so far, my two expense claim items. Let's go and add one more inside here. Going to add um, a business meal. Put uh, the stakeouts. And what I'm going to do here is be a bit cheeky and I'm going to claim for the dollar stake. Okay, so it works out 62 pounds. So I'm fine. Let's add that one in there as well. Okay, this is my CS yeah, door. My expense items, a total of thousand four hundred pounds, and I'm going to submit that now for approval. So clicking on that has started off uh, my workflow process. So you can see there's my workflow process that has just started now, and from here I can then go and track and uh, and, and run that process. Then have a look at exactly what that looks like. If I go back into my human resources view. You'll see my task list is refreshed. I don't have any tasks. It's gone for my manager to approve. And I can see it's currently sitting at manager approval. To open up that view flow, we can have a look at the process that I built uh, to do this expense claim. So this has started off, it's, it's gone through a couple of steps, it's sitting at the first approver, looking at that, I can see it's Dennis, he's needed to do that first approval, and based upon the value, it'll either that need to go to second approval. There are two other things that uh, are on insight here, such as sending email messages when certain uh, approval limits or when things are approved, um, I will receive an email letting that, me know that my expense claims have been approved and it's gone to be processed. I also receive a text notification, another little thing that we've added inside here. So uh, I get a text to alert that you know about that expense claim. Because it's of a high value, I'd really like to know that it has come through. It helps me with my budgeting, my personal budgeting. So getting that, that message uh, really is a, is a great news for me when, uh, when my claims are approved. Right, so now let's go in as Dennis. So Dennis is the person that now needs to approve this claim. So if we go and log in as Dennis, if Dennis logs into his, uh, in this case, into his SharePoint site, or he could even be outside of SharePoint and receive his task list. Uh, over here, you can speak, see that claim there for Igor. Uh, it's come through, it's available, and Dennis goes and clicks on that. And what that's doing is it's loading up the same view. I don't have to create this multiple different times for all you know, these different pages. It's the same information being used here. It's loaded that up, it's showing it's a Seattle business trip that's come through. Um, I can click on other claims and, and go and have a look at what other people have claimed for that period of time and do some comparison. What I've done in this example is I've actually brought some information a bit closer, a little bit more dynamic. So what I mean by that is here are the claim items. So there's some air for hotel and business meals. And when I go and click on one of those, what it's done is it's showing me, well, 800 pounds, but the average for this type of category is 589 pounds. So if I go and click on the hotel, I can see, well, that looks like that's probably in the same region. That looks okay. What about these business meals? Well, the average claim is 40 and uh, Igor's busy claiming 62. So that seems a little bit high. Um, but what are, you know, how are these actually made up? What, what makes up that 40, 40 pounds to be an average? Well, if I open up this little hidden area here, it's showing me all the claims that make up that average. So as I click on those, you can see it's loading up all the other claims from all the different people that have, that have put claims through, and I can start to get an idea right while I'm about to make this approval about more information um, against other people as well as other claims uh, that Eagles also made as well. And of course, we can still take this further and actually go and filter this to show, show me only the claims for Eagle uh, that, that, that have come through um, and be able to filter against that as well. All right, so once uh, um, uh, Dennis has gone through this, uh, he can go and uh, add his comments. 
this time. And you can go and submit that off and decide that he's approved that. So Dennis submits that off. Process moves forward. And if you go back now and look at Dennis's task list, you'll notice that 101 claim is now gone. And if you go and look at the overall workflow that he was busy tracking, uh, what you'll see is in a couple of seconds this will refresh and we can see that that has moved forward to the second uh, second level approval. There we go. That has gone first level, it was approved, it was greater than the £300 uh, expense limit, and that's moved over to second level approval, uh, where Dennis's manager now also needs to participate in, in making this approval. Uh, once he's approved it, we go forward, send some emails, uh, send some text notifications, and then go down to processing. Uh, but I'll leave that for uh, for another time. So I use the, the K2 designer to implement this process. I use a combination of some smart objects uh, that I've got here, ones that I've wrapped around web services. So there's a web service on the internet that allows me to get currencies, as well as getting the currencies by date. I've turned that into a smart object, and now it's nice and easy for me to be able to build a, a page around that. And I've got my, my smart objects for my expense items and my expense uh, header as well and then a couple pages behind those pages, different views. And what you'll notice is in my new expense claim, and as well as in my expense claim approval pages, uh, you can see the reuse of the detailed expense header there, uh, the expense item list is being reused. So when I built the different pages, I just, it was a matter of reusing uh, some of the views that I've already created. All right, thank you very much for uh, uh, watching this, uh, this small presentation. I hope you find it